Hey Crypto Bros, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. You're enjoying what is currently happening in Zen. We're going to cover the charts. We're going to talk about key indicators for the overall economy, where we're actually heading. You do want to pay attention to this because it affects the whole crypto market and it affects Zen as well too. We're going to talk about how the Zen ecosystem can essentially hit a trillion dollar in market capitalization and maybe even overtake cardano ethereum as the best performing assets in the next bull market so let's go ahead and get into the video so as we discussed in the previous video we were saying look the bulls are going to come in they're going to push us up against this resistance line right here with what's happening with the ordinals auction and what's been happening with a lot of projects that are going to be coming out on zen <clears throat> with phoenix again launching on polygon first and then eventually on ethereum and then the other chains but let's focus on the chart particular here. The bulls are going to come and push us up against this resistance line. And what we want to see, again, we want to see this turn into support. And we want to see on the lower time frames, we want to build these higher high structures, guys. Because once we start building the higher highs and higher low structures on the lower time, fr time frame, that essentially gives us momentum to the upside, right? Gives us momentum to the upside to break this resistance line. Now, are we going to break it all in one go? No, I don't think so because there is a bit of a confluence that we've been talking and discussing here in regards to this area. Now, this comes in at the 3E2 Fib level that if we were to take our extrapolation tool, guys, I'll just show you real quick. We've been discussing this throughout our videos on this channel. But you can see that this comes in at the 382 level. Again, we went from an inflationary standpoint to deflationary building projects on the Zen ecosystem and essentially making Zen a lot more scarce. But what we want to pay attention to, we want to pay attention to on the lower time frames. We want to see those higher highs and higher lows get put in, most likely on the for three or four hourly and then that can confirm we're going to get a test of the resistance line around the 1219 area now zen did drop off a zero and that brought a lot of sellers into the market and that that has been a key psychological level anytime you drop a zero in the zen price you know you're going to probably be met with a bit of a resistance because again it's a psychological level guys every time you break some key important levels and price action you're most likely going to see sellers come in and sell off the particular asset. In this case, that's what we saw here. We saw sellers come in, drive us down. I want to see us maintain this area of support around the 5-2 area. And then, you know, even if we come back, retest this, again, we've talked about building this as a support structure so that we can continue to test that resistance area right here. So again, a lot of confluence in this area. This is going to be a key area we're probably most likely going to be talking about over the several days or week, and then hopefully see where we're at in terms of price action. Now, what I want you to be aware of in terms of shifting gears here is that you always have to keep in mind the economic inflation that is happening around us. So you see this interview with Elon Musk, again, with Fox News, talking about how inflation is going to run rapid no matter what, even when you print money, and that you're getting rewarded for bad behavior. Well, what Zen does is it rewards you for good behavior, building and incentivizing the community to essentially develop and make the asset itself deflationary. When you participate in the economy and you bring in value, your currency should essentially be more scarce at the end of the day. And that's what Zen is doing. The more projects that come out on Zen, the more development and, and the more you entice people to want to use your crypto asset, it just spells very well for overall price. It's just economics 101. But I do want to note something that a lot of people actually miss in regards to this, and that is inflation doesn't just come from the printer. It also comes when there is less demand for U.S. dollar. When countries drop U.S. dollar, that debt will come back and turn cause higher inflation. This is just normal economics 101. And a lot of people are so stuck on the printer side of it. When you see countries, you see Russia creating a special organization to mine Bitcoin. When they are basically shifting gears and moving to a digital world, they're going to be dropping the US dollar. That's what's going to be happening is that they're going to be dropping. The debt will come back to the United States and turn causing more inflation. The printer doesn't have to do anything at the end of the day. If there is less demand for that currency 
and that currency is no longer the world reserve currency, then all of that debt comes back to the United States and in turn basically causes even higher inflation. So a lot of people are so stuck on inflation has to come from the printer. That's not the case. If the demand for the United States dollar comes down, you're in a world of big trouble. And you see here, Japan insurer with 65 billion of assets plans to offload all its currency hedge and foreign debt holdings, meaning that they're most likely gonna move their debt away from the United States dollar. They're gonna be dropping their United States debt. It's the only way. And United States is gonna foreclose on their debt one way or another. These countries are either gonna shift or be left behind. And you see Brazil, the BRICS, right? Continue head on, full force, not stopping. And they're ready to essentially move into a digital world and move into a new reserve currency. Now, one thing I wanna note, again, United States is essentially falling behind. We've seen time and time again, year after year, they've been going after Coinbase. They've been going after Gemini. They've been going after so many of these exchanges and it doesn't spell too well when you don't have a regulatory framework to prioritize and become the beam in terms of cryptocurrency. The United States needs to step up their game. And I don't think th that they can anymore because they're already too late to the party, guys. You have that guy showing up around 2 o'clock at night to the party and the party is almost finished. That's what the United States is, is that they're too late coming into this. They should have already had a regulatory framework saying, hey, we want to work with you guys. We want to work with all these crypto projects. Let's build a regulatory framework that basically doesn't hurt the average investor and it also get a lot of development and innovation happening in the space. It doesn't tarnish that because there is a lot of innovation happening in the space. And you see even Coinbase coming out, guys, and saying that we're going to leave the United States dollar if United States SEC doesn't get their shit together. They've come out and said that over and over again. And why would you? Why would you want to stay in a country that doesn't have their shit together, where you can be going to another country that's adopting crypto, that's inviting you in and inviting innovation? That's what we want to see. Let's move on course. Again, Zenflex, guys, Zenflex.tv. It's a great way to onboard users and start learning about Zen. Pretty cool stuff. Shout out to Zenergy World. Again, he is the creator of Zenflex. So if you do want to check him out, you can go to Zenflex.tv or you can go and follow him on Twitter. And he's been doing some very phenomenal stuff with Zen. Now, in regards to Phoenix, if you do want to participate, it's going to be launching on Polygon on April 29th. So if you do want to get into Phoenix, you're going to have to have Matic version of Zen and you're going to have to get that, burn it, and then you'll be able to participate in Phoenix and then you can stake it from that point. And then later on through that month of May, they're going to be launching on the other chains as well too. So a lot of development is happening in regards to all this, but Again, you came for the video in regards to how Zen can reach a trillion dollars in market capitalization in terms of the whole ecosystem. Now, if you go to Zen.pub, guys, if you go to this website, you can see that in this website, there's multiple chains. There's Ethereum, Binance, Polygon, Avalanche, and so forth, okay? And you can see and you can look at the liquid supply. You can look at the total supply. Now, so far, I've added everything up. And as we speak right now, the current market capitalization for all of the chains and all of the, again, pairs and everything in terms of DBZ and Exelon, you're coming in around $80 million in market capitalization. This is just with a few projects and burning across all of these chains. Imagine when there is billions of dollars coming into the Zen ecosystem. Where do you think, where do you think Zen is going to be? Zen is going to be a trillion dollar asset when they've implemented first principles. And when you have burning mechanism that basically rewards the community back for participation, I believe that Zen can reach the highs of a trillion dollar market cap. I really truly do believe that because they're building something special. And when you attract developers that have first principles, 
Again, who's not for that? That's why we're basically in the crypto asset realm, guys. That's why we get into Bitcoin and then we go through the rabbit hole. We're going to continue to grow. $80 million market cap, very small to very early if you're looking to invest for the long term. But again, always apply risk management. I don't want to always provide you with the hopium. Look, the hopium is great, but you always have to have risk management. We're traders here. We always apply risk management. Last thing I want to leave you off with, again, this video is a little bit getting too long, but I want you to pay attention to the DXY. Now, DXY is a basket of currencies against the United States dollar. And it kind of shows the dominance that the US dollar has against all of these other currencies. Now, we've seen since 2022 of September, we've been in a complete downtrend. And so far in this stage right here, Bitcoin has done very, very well. Now you can correlate, you can bring in the Bitcoin chart and compare when DXY doesn't do well, you have risk on assets like Bitcoin, gold, and these other assets do very well. So now what we're doing is we're kind of hitting that key line with the DXY. You can see there's a lot of support here for us, a lot of confluence in this area. And we've already touched it again this year before. So there is a, a double support. Now, if we break below the support structure, that will spell very well for risk on assets for Bitcoin and altcoins and gold guys, essentially. And that's what we want to see. If you're prepared for the outcome of this, a lot of people will be hurt who are not involved in the cryptocurrency realm, or they're not involved in gold or any of that, but we are reaching pivotal role and the DXY, the dominance keeps dropping. We talked about this, but that's what I'm going to leave you off with in terms of this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, as always, stay profitable.